17 finalists, three categories, $1 million. This is Rocket Mortgage, Detroit Demo Bank. What's up, everybody? My name is James Chapman, and I'm your host for this year's Rocket Mortgage Detroit Demo Day 2020. 2020 has not been playing around with us, and growing a business at any time is difficult. Insert a global pandemic, and that makes things 10 times harder. But that has not stopped these entrepreneurs from thinking about the future. This is the build category, where these entrepreneurs are established businesses that have continued to grow despite challenging times and want to expand further. I've got a group of judges that are gonna help me pick the winners. First, we've got Candace Matthews Bracking of Lightship Capital. Second, Jamie Shea of Core Development. And last, but certainly not least, Delane Parnell of Play Versus. All right, first up for the build category, Razar. Everything that we aspire to do is to aspire to help young people and to really help brands in a purposeful and positive way. Many times right now, these kids in the neighborhoods, they're not seeing people like them in these roles of being entrepreneurs. They're not seeing people like them reaching back out to them and saying, hey, I want to help you um, become an entrepreneur or fulfill your dream or whatever it is that you want to do. They need more role models. Really, the idea is to create a ripple effect of positivity and that the impossible dream can become possible. Now let's welcome Razar to the pitch circle. Did you know that all it takes is you to create a worldwide ripple effect? Martin Luther King, Steve Jobs, Rosa Parks, they all did, and you can too. Hi, my name is Ashley Williams, and my ripple effect is Razar. As the founder and CEO, we're better connecting brands with younger generations through purpose-driven content. As a journalism graduate of USC and a former journalist for NBC News and USA Today, my life mission is to help businesses change the world through content. Each year, businesses toss 4 to 24% of their revenue on marketing, but it's often ineffective. As a result, they can miss out on reaching the $3 trillion buying power of millennials and Gen Z. That's where my company, Razar, comes in. Razar connects businesses with over 5,000 millennial and Gen Z content creators who make them articles, videos, podcasts, and photos. Our patent pending technologies and content processes position us above our competitors. Our secret sauce is working. Our customers see two times, seven times, and even 200 times more engagement from our work. And now, due to COVID-19, Razar can make a greater impact. Next year, we're on track to generate a million in revenue and to have 10,000 content creators. With an investment, we can finally build out our technology and hire amazing talent right here in Detroit. Please support us. Remember, all it takes is you to create a worldwide ripple effect. Thank you. Ashley, fantastic pitch. All right, now let's go to the judges for some feedback and questions. Judges? Why not sell the content directly to media companies versus them hiring journalists? We actually are planning to do that, but the first model from what we found with brands is that this is really of interest to them right now, but that is the second phase of the company. So Ashley, tell me a little bit about what it means, purpose-driven content. What, is, what does that mean? The idea of the framework is the aspiration of a person, of who they aspire to be, as well as the impact that they aspire to make in the world. And within this framework, there's eight to 15 pieces of criteria, like around the tone, editorial, empathy, um, et cetera, that really help identify if that content meets that criteria. Ashley, again, great job. And you can now exit the pitch circle. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I still a little, you know, you know, to some degree, they're they're seeming like they're building it out still and trying to understand exactly what that secret sauce is going to be. So, it's getting a little bit down to like what's going to be patentable, you know, in this. I don't in even think they need to patent anything. Yeah. To be honest with you, I just focus on building a network of writers, building a network of um, of clients on the brand side, or you know, distribution partners on the media side, and you know, connecting the content, figuring out who wants to pay for it, whether it's the brand or the, you know, media company like a TechCrunch or Yahoo Finance or whomever. People are looking for um, a shift in how they can be in the world and what is possible, why they're here. And I think that Rizar aims to provide that to people to understand that you do have a purpose here. Okay, we heard from Rizar. Now let's check out Skimphoria Facial Bar. 
I honestly always knew I wanted to open up a spa. I didn't think it would be a facial bar. And when I went to school for aesthetics, I fell in love with skincare and I started to go to different spas and see what was missing. And once I fell in love with it, I said, what can I do differently? What can I bring different to Metro Detroit? It brings me joy when we're able to see the changes in people's lives that we're able to make when they come in here, full face of makeup, and they don't want anybody to see their skin. And then months later, they come in and they're smiling and they're happy. So that keeps me going. That brings me joy. Let's welcome to the Pitch Circle, Skinforia Facial Bar. Hello, I'm Jesse Hayes, founder of Skinforia Facial Bar, and that's exactly what it is. You sit at our bar setting, listen to upbeat music, while you receive your $59 medical grade facial. 75% of our customers are working professionals that have no time for long appointments. So our services are quick with proven results. What has taken us to the next level is our Acne Boot Camp where we can clear your skin in 90 days, no medication, no health insurance needed. We've asked our customers, why Skinforia? And they said, because you look like me, your staff looks like me, and my skin needs help. Our team is different because we figure out the trigger to your skin problems, we educate you, and together we fix it. Now, before the pandemic, we were fully booked. Now, during the pandemic, we're fully booked with the wait list. Our retail sales tripled. Why? Because we were able to pivot with virtual consultations and an online retail store. We're out of space because people realize Skinforia is not a luxury. Skinforia is a need. Currently with over 5,000 clients, 200 monthly memberships, our uh, revenue for our fifth year would be 1.2 million. So with your help today, we would finish our second location that's here in Corktown. This new location will provide 22 new jobs for the city of Detroit. This new location will also provide us with the ability to ship our acne retail kits nationwide so that you can clear your skin from the comfort of your home. And our revenue will increase by 75%. All of that because of you. Skinforia is not giving up during this pandemic. This is our time to get to work. Thank you. Great pitch. Now let's get to work. Jamie? So how much revenue comes from either your online or the, um, the physical boxes that you are necessarily shipping? Does it make sense to be opening more in brick and mortar locations, you know, in terms of your future of your business or to focus more on something that's less capital intensive? Exactly. So what happened was with the pandemic, we just started to sell more and more online. We really wasn't making that our main focus. So right now, maybe only 10% is online, but we're getting so much sales and so many clients coming in. We don't have enough to be able to purchase all of the inventory that we want. But every time we're putting stuff out, it sells online within three to four days, we're always sold out. But right now it's only about 10%. Most of it is pretty much in store. Yeah, I think this is sort of business that people feel really comfortable going in store to. Um, I do think that it, it, it likely makes sense to have both options, both online and, and physical brick and mortar, almost like a boutique fitness trend, yep. you know, um, uh, in terms of a comp. What, what's the monthly membership? Can you explain what that is yeah. and then also how much that yeah. costs? So we have a monthly membership where our, our facials are usually $59, but you can get it for $55, but it includes um, a free add-on. You get a free upgrade. Uh, it's no contract, so you're able to keep on going and you say, hey, until my wedding and my skin is clear, I can stop at any time. But that helps us with revenue. We know what our cash flow is going to be, so we know on the first and 15th we're going to get the funds to be able to come in the account. Fantastic pitch. Let's give the judges some time to deliberate and you can go ahead and exit the pitch, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't want to push on a membership thing, but I didn't really understand it still, you know, in the sense of like, because of the, of the, of numbers. the numbers. Yeah. You know, what, I, what it might've brought up though, is like the stickiness, right? So if she, all of a sudden she, those 5,000 were maybe total clients. Yeah. And then you have 200 active monthly members. Yeah. Because what happens, you know, it's, you know, if she's good at what she's doing, does she solve the problem? Yeah. And then those people are no longer clients anymore. Sure, yeah. How do I feel? I feel great. I can breathe a little bit more now that I've done my pitch, so I feel good. Okay, we just heard from Skinforia. Now, let's take a look at allergies. I always like to say Chicago, Chicago raised me, Detroit made me. 
We build products that are all about improving the lives of those impacted by severe food allergies, including people just like myself. I want to buy my own product. I'm going to, you know, you got to, I can't get a discount on it, right? So I want to make sure that folks like myself and the 220 million people on the planet that suffer from this condition have a little bit more peace of mind. And I'm quite confident that with the resources, we can make some special things happen. Let's welcome allergy to the pitch circle. Hey everyone, my name is Javier Evelyn and I'm the founder and CEO of Allergy. I'm also one of the more than 220 million people worldwide that are impacted by this life-threatening condition. But beyond the rising costs that have impacted our industry by $25 billion per year, the biggest issue is with lack of adherence. Around two thirds of patients and caregivers typically are just like me. We're hard-headed, we don't always carry that life-saving medication because it's clunky, we're forgetful, and it's that sheer stigma of walking around with something that makes you feel a bit different, right? So here at Allergy, we found an organic way to solve this by combining the most ubiquitous device that we all have on us, our cell phones, with a redesigned epinephrine auto injector, right? So we can go from brunch selfie is life to, oh my God, they put a peanut in my dish. And in a couple of moments, you're gonna inject yourself, right? And we're gonna make sure the right folks know where you're at, what you're allergic to, and how to save your life in real time. On the other side of the platform, we built an app that's all about improving patient behavior to hopefully stop you from using our device in the first place, including features including a food allergy diary to hopefully give you a little bit more communication with your doctors on a day-to-day -day basis. And this has led to a groundswell of support from the entire food allergy community. We're at a space now where we're talking to some of the top pharma industry folks in this space and some of the top research organizations as well. To date, we're here because we're literally sitting on a proposal to execute, manufacture our devices, and go through a very simple regulatory process. Furthermore, we're on the cusp of the first B2B mo mobile application in the food allergy space for all immunotherapy at this point that we aim to monetize this year as well as next year as well. And this is the team that made it come together. We came from all over the country to the D to be responsible for multiple patents in this space that are now across six different countries at this point. And ultimately, this is our why. We know our audience, so we look forward to saving some lives with you as well. Thank you so much. Javier, thanks a lot for that pitch. Uh, I'm going to throw it to the judges for feedback and questions, and uh, let's start with Delane. Okay, so what's the purpose of not focusing just exclusively on hardware and um, instead, you know, in addition, building a, a mobile app uh, that serves a B2B purpose? Absolutely. So the beginning thesis was, hey, let's, we, have, we know the audience, we know that there's an issue around adherence, but we really just kind of drew influence from other consumer devices. When you think about anything that's smart these days, uh, connected hardware, uh, the hardware is your Trojan, right? Trojan horse, that is. Ultimately, that's going to give us access to data information. So when we think about the long-term play, it's not just that, but also the ability to monetize our application this year as well as next year as well, too. The long-term play also gives us the ability to have the, mo the device to connect to our app, which gives us that uh, combination of a connected device that you're kind of comfortable with as uh, consumers are these days with the uh, platform business approach, if that makes Could sense. you go back to the screen with the, with the app? Cool, and so the, the third slide with the, the food, is that, what's that, what is that a picture of? Yeah, so right now, this is a, a snapshot of someone searching for recipes within our platform. So this is the only HIPAA compliant, meaning that we're really focused on patient data protection at this point. And what this does is allow us to create an allergy profile for yourself and anyone else that you have access over to, right? Ultimately, this will be a filter. So uh, Amy Allergy right now is allergic to different uh, peanuts, nuts, et cetera. From there, that's gonna be our filter. So when it's uh, time to, for her to be babysat from someone else, go to school, we can share that with anyone in the industry. Javier, great job with, your, you. with your pitch. No, and thanks job. for presenting yeah, your sure. business. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead and exit the pitch. Awesome. There's some substance there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to see him restructure his story, trying to figure out how do you just kind of hone in on one thing that they're going to do really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the immunotherapy space. We've got this auto injector. They work, you know, concurrently, and let's let's work around that story as opposed to the mobile app. It just wasn't clear the. I think until he actually continued on after we asked questions what the value prop of the mobile app is. I actually, I think that the mobile app could be a wedge into the space um, even before the hardware, especially if he can get it out the door fast. But if he said, hey, 
This is for you to to in, uh, input all of your allergies, track. Um, Used in a different uh, way. Yeah, yeah, track what you're eating versus having to write it down and, and then also communicate with your doctor. If he said those sort of three things, for example, as value props, I think that that could have been, you know, a really strong pitch. I'm feeling grateful more than anything else. Like, um, there's not that many businesses that get a chance to have an opportunity like this and it's not lost on me. Um, especially when you think about tech startups and the ups and downs that it goes, drill down a little bit more into the medical device and digital health space. So I couldn't feel you more grateful, but also excited. Okay, we just heard from Allergy. Now let's see what's up with Parley Boy. I mean, the money would help us realize the vision for the new future of Purely Boyd. We've been courted by franchise consultants. We had press around me potentially being the first African-American beauty franchisor. I was like, me? Right? <laughs> you know, COVID kind of put a halt to all that. Well, I had two family members that had the virus, and they had the virus for a long time. They have since recovered. Um, as a business owner, it was so sad to see people you saw a month ago die. It affected me, not because I got sick. You know, I can deal with it if I get sick, but one of them, no. And I was gonna close and I had a conversation with my mother and she said, are you done? And I said, you know, mama, am I? Am I whining or, you know, she goes, no, you're forgetting. You're forgetting all that I went through, all that you went through, everything that everybody, even the slave on that ship went through to get you here. Now, if you remember and you decide this is not what you want, then okay, move on. But if you remember and decide you are doing exactly what you should be doing, then tomorrow you need to get to work. And so I did. Let's welcome Paralee Boyd to the pitch circle. This is my grandmother, Paralee. She, like many women before her, would spend all day Saturday in the hair salon. I too would spend my Saturdays in the hair salon, but while working in the Middle East, I no longer had the time. What if I told you, you no longer had to spend all day in the hair salon? What if I told you, your wait is over? My name is Dana White, and I am the owner of Paralee Boyd, a walk-in only hair salon for women with thick and curly hair. In 2018, Paralee Boyd was featured four times by Forbes because we are re revolutionizing the hair care industry. We use lean manufacturing automotive principal principles, streamlining our services to see women in under two hours as opposed to six hours in a traditional salon. We are process driven. We have a process for everything we do during your service. And although process driven, we still allow for that community feel both during and after your service through our customer service. In the years Paralee Boyd has been open, we've serviced over 35,000 guests while generating revenues of over $2 million by word of mouth alone. The vision for Paralee Boyd is to expand nationally and offer a product line. This opportunity from Demo Day allows us to start a product line, invest in marketing, expand our first location, and to continue speaking with franchise consultants who have begun courting us. Hair products and tools have evolved, and Paralee Boyd has evolved the hair care experience. We're excited to inspire women towards productivity and empower women by giving them back their most valuable commodity, their time. How, how important is, uh, is time to a customer who wants to come to the a uh, hair salon to, to get this service relative to, uh, to community. Extremely important. And so, you know, the hair salon was our country club, right? We'd work all week, spend all day Saturday in the hair salon so we could commune. Right now, we're members of country clubs. We no longer have to use that for the hair salon. So we get them in and out, but we still want our guests to have that connection to the hair salon. So it's about 
listening, my hair traffic controllers are listening and being able to follow up with our guest about the interview, about their daughter going to prom through a telephone call or an email to still have that community connection to Paralee Boyd. What you're not going to do is just act like you didn't say hair traffic controllers, which was very smooth. Okay. Just, like, I was yeah, trying. Yeah. I couldn't figure out like how I could say something I about that. it. No, I think that. Yeah. I think that. I, it, it's, it's a job description. It's, 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 it's my managers are in charge of trafficking to make sure they are the, the, the facilitators of getting women between their, their stations. So tell me why, why are, why can you do this and a regular salon just can't? It's our lean manufacturing principles. I've worked with engineers from the big three to say what is the most efficient and fastest way to service this guest in a certain amount of time. What services can we do? What services can't we do? And how can we promote hair health by doing it? Fantastic Love job, Dennis. Thank you, Yeah, James. you did a great, you did a great you job. Yeah. Thank you, Thank <laughs> you. Feel free to exit the pit circle and then we'll let the judges deliberate. Thank you. Great job. See you. Yep. Yep. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye. I mean, there's been no more of like a Detroit company than that one so far. Like, it's like a franchise's dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really interesting. So I had my favorite song in my head, and I imagined somebody behind me with a boom box walking while I was walking down the red carpet. <laughs> so I had the whole Jedi mind trick confidence thing going on. So I'm, I'm really confident with what was left on the table for pitch day. We just heard from Paralee Boyd. Now, let's check out Monger's Provisions. You know, we're lucky to carry wine and craft beer and cider and all sorts of fun stuff. We're gonna have to pause for a second. I think somebody might be wanting to come in or at least ask. You can come in. Let me put this on. Sorry, we're just doing a little video shoot. You're more than welcome to come in if you want. Don't be, no, we flagged you in because we're open. Yeah. Right, like we don't sell cheese and chocolate because it's gonna make us financially rich. But if we can get assistance in the form of a loan or a cash prize, it means that we can continue to like do the things that are important to us, which means help small producers, pay our employees more. Hire more of them. Hire more people. And maybe Zach and I will actually like someday be able to make a living, you know? Maybe. Let's bring Monger's provisions to the pitch circle. Hi, I'm Zach Berg. And I'm Will Werner. Together, we founded Monger's Provisions and have a combined 25 years of experience in the food industry. We're a specialty food retailer in Midtown focused on curating a selection of cheese, chocolates, and charcuterie. We have a mission to cultivate the knowledge of food while connecting people to delicious products, places, makers, and we do it with passion. Detroit's on the rise, and we want to continue to support the culinary landscape that, that's developing here. It's a world-class city, and it deserves world-class amenities. Despite a 42% decrease in brick and mortar from 2019, we've adapted, growing 16% year-to-date by increasing e-commerce over 2,200%. Now our customers find us at home over the internet, and we've created an online shopping experience that's fun and educational. We've added things like Zoom tastings as a way to deepen our connection with people while needing to be a part. Our footprint needs to change. We need a, a larger retail space or a supplemental location that can accommodate our online sales. We also like to spend more money on marketing. There's very little competition in the virtual tasting space right now, and we're well positioned to take advantage of that. People demand to know where their food comes from, who's making it, and we offer that transparency by connecting people to producers near and far. You know, not everybody can afford the best car or accessory, but the best cheeses and chocolates are within reach. And we carry the best, having products that you can't find anywhere else in the state. We really can't wait to connect with you soon and help you find your next favorite treat. Great job with your pitch, absolutely. So let's toss it over to the judges for some questions and feedback. Are you as passionate about the work in terms of, you know, shipping food versus being able to have that in-store experience with a customer and sharing that, that time with them? And is it something that you, really want to continue doing, assuming that the world goes back to something similar to what it was prior to COVID? Yeah, I think that traditional plain e-commerce, I, I totally see and agree with your point. It's not 
nearly as connective. And we love this consultative shopping experience. So the Zoom tastings really have spoken to, you know, feeding us while we're feeding them. It's been really fun because we do connect with people. And in, any, in many ways, we have an extended experience of what we would have been doing over the counter. So we definitely have found a product that we feel like will outlast COVID. You know, people have um, work teams all over the country now. And so this is a way for your team to come together and have a little meeting and a little nosh beforehand. And so we think it's definitely something that we enjoy and we see in the future. The use of funds, is it to scale um, the Zoom tastings or is it to continue to sustain the, the storefront as well? You know, it's kind of both. Currently, we've been doing all the shipping out of a store that was designed for none of that. And so ergonomically, it's really difficult. We don't have things like a walk-in fridge. We use our case and we flip it a lot. And so as the volume grows, we just need a footprint that can be more adaptable or a warehouse and a supplemental. Yeah, we're, we're like, we're booking so many of these right now that we need other people who can do the presentations. I'm gonna allow the judges some time to deliberate and ask you guys to uh, go ahead and exit the pitch circle. You guys um, wanna eat some of this food while we, yeah, while you, while oh, you, you deliberate? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to Candace. Yeah, you can throw it in the middle and yeah, I'll just scoot right over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, good you. Job. Thank you guys yeah. for your time. Yeah, great job. Okay, but I'm, I'm seriously gonna get into this after we're done talking. Food sells on Instagram, right? Like we watch chefs all the time. So imagine going to your cheesemonger and them telling you like about in each individual cheese. I, I think it's kind of cool and kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, no, no, people go crazy on cheese. Yeah, yeah. I think the one challenge is uh, how much do they want to be in front of the camera versus behind it? Um, Cause that could be that could be a severe issue in terms of, you know, viability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Good. Candice, go ahead and eat some cheese and then we'll wait on the next picture. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. Okay. Guys, go, I'm going to take the orange cheese. Sorry, right, the orange cheese is white. <laughs> white cheese. <laughs> all day. I think we did well. It's all a little bit of a blur, but, you know, we got, we got our point across. The food speaks a lot for us as well. And so the delicious food helps. All right. Without further ado, let's welcome the Build finalists back to the pitch circle. Welcome back, you guys. We've got three awards to give out for this category, and the decision was not easy. That's why Delane is gonna be telling us <laughs> who the winners are for this category. Y'all ready? Delane, who's taking home the cash? I just wanna echo James's point that the decision was not easy. It actually took us quite a bit of time to, to you know, come to this determination. Our third place winner taking home $125,000. Is allergy. Our second place winner, taking home $150,000. Skin for a facial bar. And last but not least, our first place winner, taking home $200,000, is Pearly Boy. You gonna come get this thing or what? Congratulations to all of the winners. But, 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 there's always a but. Nobody's going home empty handed. For any finalists who didn't walk away with one of the top prizes today, you all will receive $10,000 each for your business. Congratulations to all of the finalists. Hey, 
Elin bor bara för all. Jag är ringare. Hej ringare. Thanks for tuning in to this year's Rocket Mortgage Detroit Demo Day. You still have the opportunity to help your favorite company walk away with $25,000 with the People's Choice Grant. So start voting. Also, tune back in on October 28th to see who won.